Welcome back to HRN HQ at DeRosa with Tara Bodwe. Hopefully not for the final time ever, <laughs> but for a while we're going to handicap a race for Horse Racing Nation and uh, Sarah will be leaving us, but not the industry fandom. Thankfully, I always look forward to your insights, such as what we're about to get in the Malibu. And it's a good race to send you off on. Yeah, and I, I think we have to start with last year's because that was really <laughs> Flight Lines kind of coming out for yes. me as a serious talent. He to beat be Baby Yoda. With. <laughs> well, maybe some might not take that so seriously, no, well, at but, the time. but at the time, um, and the way that he did it with yes. uh, such ease is really kind of when I think we all started to take him a little bit more seriously, and we got kind of a sneak peek at what we were potentially going to get from him this year, and I I, I was not disappointed. No. And I know you were either as <laughs> no, a major that was, flight line fan. That was awesome and uh, certainly saw more of that this year. And uh, it's a good segue to the Malibu in general because from a 30,000 foot view, I often struggle with this race being a grade one. Restricted to three-year-olds at the end of the year. Eh, seven for a long, interesting distance. Used to be part of the Stroop series, which is kind of not a thing anymore. But when you look at the horses who have won this race, there might, other than outside the Classics and Breeders' Cup races, there might not be a better resume. And it all goes back for me. The GOAT, Spectacular Bid, won this race. You mentioned Flightline, plenty of other big names in the meantime. This is a race that typically has serious implications. And I think we're going to see a lot of who is a serious player for next year. And I know that you and I both take Taba very seriously in this spot. I think that there's a lot of other horses um, more towards the inside of this field that we took seriously at the start <laughs> of this year. Yes. And I'm not really taking them. One of my worst them. opinions of the year. Well, we all have them. <laughs> uh, I'm not really taking them so seriously going into this race because what we've seen from them coming back after their potential derby interest, or in the case of Messier, his derby attempt, I'm not too impressed. Mm, agreed. And uh, on Taba, who should he win this, another grade one, this is your first year voting in the Eclipse Awards. Oh, am I still doing that? Even I hope so. Well, you're in the, you're in the club. Well, so. you pay them? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, you at least have this year uh, your bona fides are secure. All right. Would this be enough to for you to vote Taba as three-year-old male? With the win, of course. It depends on the way that it's done, what the time is, what the figure comes back as. If we see a performance like we've seen from him in his last two starts where he won the Pennsylvania Derby and then was a, a decent third in the Breeders' Cup Classic considering the field that he faced in there um, and the way that he was able to close into what was already a, a huge <laughs> margin of you know lead going right. into stretch for life is good and flight line. Uh, if we see something similar to that, then likely, uh, but I haven't, I haven't fully decided. Yeah, I didn't no, know it's that a tough my, one. My ability to vote was still on the table. It so. is. Well, I'm glad we had this conversation. Yeah. You'll be watching it through a, yet another lens, uh, <laughs> the Malibu. And now the pace is not going to be what it was in the classic. There's no life is good or flight lines in here, but forbidden the kingdom from the rail, it's going to go, obviously. I think others will want to at least be close, if not challenge them early. So Taba, maybe a similar setup, at least in the dynamics of the race, should be given every chance. How far can Forbidden Kingdom go on the lead in this race? That's a great question because I think a lot of us really questioned stretching out for him earlier on when he yes. was prepping for well, the Well, I didn't, but shame on me. Well, he kind of proved wrong. us wrong right. a little <laughs> bit, at least going into that San Anita Derby, and then he didn't get the mile in the eighth against arguably better company with Taba winning that race. And so We've seen him come back and try to six furlong races since then and be unsuccessful in both of those attempts. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't necessarily look at him as can he go seven furlongs. I look at him as is he the same horse that we saw earlier this year? And I don't really know. I don't know. No. I don't think so. And you're not no. going to get um, a fair price because Agreed. we have the my race horse element as well. And he's, yeah, just a no name. And, oh, and it's one of those like sort of trap prices like, oh, you're getting – Six to one on Forbidden Kingdom. I'm not really sure because Taba clearly will be the favorite. We'll take money. You and I both agree it's the horse to beat, but I do think there's some opportunity underneath, as do you. Yeah, and we're going in different directions for that. You well, a little bit. I like yours next of the next one. Of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about yours. Okay, Apprehend, uh, who 
I actually looked at the races at Zia that day. They had a pick five, whatever. It was fun. Stakes races. I was blown away that this horse was three to 10 in the Zia Park Derby. And of course, to add insult to injury for the backers of the three to 10, his uncoupled stable mate actually won the race and made more sense at the prices they were. Now he gets to cut back to the seven furlongs and, you know, the numbers stack up for me and I'll be keen to see what the exacto will pays are. That's kind of the final arbiter in terms of how I bet the race. I have a hard time seeing table losing, but I do think apprehend going to be right there with him. I looked at this horse a little bit and I feel as though he has sort of this one anomaly figure, which was the one right before mm-hmm. the Zia Park Derby. I don't love it. probably why I get bet so much. Right. Probably uh, a lot of people will look at that and think that he stacks up with the company into this race. And I, I kind of want to see it again, depending on what price, as yes. you said, we're looking at a horse that I'm very certain will be a decent <laughs> price is Hoist the Gold, who I was kind of surprised to see him show up here uh, after he's been mostly based on the East Coast. But his race last time, a little bit disappointing. However, if we go back to Perryville, he's a horse that I actually talked about as an outrun the odds highlight horse to outrun his odds, which I'm you know, thinking he'll do in a spot like this. He was second to Gunite. He was second to eventual Breeders' Cup Spring in power a couple races ago, closing weekend at Saratoga. He was a price that day. And I think that he is likely to not get an insane pace to chase, but at least be running late. And I know that he has been successful getting into the money at the seven for a long distance, whereas others, maybe they haven't tried it yet. Maybe so we unique. thought of them as you know more distance horses. So I think that at least I know the distance suits him enough to right. get a piece of things. And the price at has least, to be good. At least 15 to one. Uh, yeah, I, I would say at least 12 being conservative. But yeah, I mean, a separator from the others. We did mention straight no chaser, not that we're going to go through them all, but I feel like he's maybe one of the more interesting ones having – Made his career debut, I believe, on turf. Uh, certainly done nothing wrong since then either. Uh, I, I just, he needs to step up, which mo- all of them do if they're going to beat Taba. But I feel like he's enough of a known name. I'm a little worried about the price, certainly the talents there, but I'll probably try to fade him underneath too. Another My Race Horse effect as well. Ah. He tried the dirt for the first time last time and it improved significantly in terms of his numbers. But another one, he hasn't done the seven yet. This is going to be his fourth lifetime start. He's not going to be whatever price you think he should be because all of his ownership group (laughs) will be backing him with their dollars. Dutch him. There you go. If they're because you you're not necessarily in on both, right? No, I'm not really in on either person. No, you no. But (laughs) as a my racehorse, you have your choice of what packages and who ends up in what. So if you're in both, maybe you play both. But yeah, they're chronic underlays, which maybe it's an opportunity for Taba and other backers. So Hoist the gold. Is there a price you would actually play to win to beat Taba, or are you strictly looking underneath? No. Something would have to go horribly wrong for Taba to not. Yeah. I actually think if Taba loses, even though I don't like him at all versus the other horses underneath, I feel like Messier is the winner if Taba loses. Really? Like just sort of that. You know, the, the whole Baffert, and, you know, people yeah. love the uncoupled entry thing. Sure. Oh, no longer Baffert. But to me, it, like, he is pointing for this race. They're going to go to the Saudi Cup. You know, th- this is the prep for that. He's ready. And is a he? p- potential championship. Messier? No, no, Taylor. Oh, okay. I was say, he's not ready for Yeah, anything. no, 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 Taylor. <laughs> I think the note said Bled walked off last time for Messier, and it's not like he's getting Lasix yeah. here. So, and he was such a short price at Keeneland coming back, and, and the horse that beat him will also be in here too. And, you know, people are just going to get betting on Messier because it's Bob right. it's California. It's a horse that many people were interested in for the Derby, but – what has he done since then with the huge no, break and then coming impossible back? Impossible to use off, no, thank off you. that I'm good. comeback. Yep, me too. All right, Tabe on top. Hoist the gold for you. Yep. Apprehend for me underneath. We'll see what the prices are eventually and how we actually bet. But Sarah, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure working with you as well. And I, I know a lot of people are out there, in, you know, the Twitterverse and YouTube, whatever, and speculation. And just it needs to be said, I'm not leaving because of you. <laughs> um, you're one of the, the great things about working here. And it's been a pleasure to get to work with you and get to know you throughout this year. And, you know, something that isn't too common for a lot of people in general in this industry 
But something I have to say to your credit is that whatever idea I had, good, bad, ugly, <laughs> insane, I always felt like you took it seriously and you took the time to hear it out and listen to it. And that's not even something I always did for you. I mean, you came to me with some ideas. So I was like, no way. Tis the bomb. Uh, well, that's one of them. <laughs> but also the stream of the streams. I was like, no way does anyone want to watch us watch something. But apparently it they did. Good, yeah. So I just appreciate you a lot. And well, thank you. I want people to know that you're, you're not the worst. No, it's, I'll take that. <laughs> I've heard worse, so I'll take mm -hmm. that for sure. But uh, yeah, I know we won't be strangers friendship wise, but definitely hope our paths cross again professionally uh excellent handicapper and not only that because they're that's a dime a dozen but the presentation we love the penmanship oh that's the best thing I yes. have to offer. and uh you know I, i've seen tickets you've shared both online and when we're just talking in here and you're creative and you're not always leaning on chalk which is a problem i have so i've learned from you we've learned from each other and we're going to blossom and uh make it the best 2023 ever that's the goal. All right. That's the goal. But first, we're going to get Taba home over one of our hopeful long shots. Yours will be longer than mine. So I'm I'm definitely going to be playing both of them underneath. I think that's the key to try to beat Forbidden Kingdom underneath Straight No Chaser, Messier. Uh, get those out of the number and uh, kick off 2023 with a bang. Good luck, everyone.